What's up everybody, Jonathan here with NLA Gaming and today I wanted to do a redo of the elevation, um, real, real world elevation data to put in the uh, Giants Editor, Farming Simulator, whatever, for building your maps. Uh, I, I created one and some of y'all may have seen that the other day and um, I was kind of playing around some more with that and thought I'd do an update video and, and I'll just delete the old one and replace it with this one. But basically the same thing. So if you watched it, it's just, this is just sort of more of an updated um, version of what's going on. Okay, so what this tutorial is going to be about is actually getting real world terrain data in your map. So basically what I'm talking about here is... You know, if you live in a, a hilly area or even a flat area, whatever, you know, if you can get your hands on the elevation data, then you sh then you should be able to create this. And and what you're looking at here on the screen is uh, this is in Giants Editor, of course, and this is uh, basically uh, uh, just a, a you know sample of some terrain data I grabbed off the internet, and I'll show you some places where to get that and whatever and what to look for, but. This is um, this is actually I think in Tennessee somewhere. Just I described some random. Oh no, it, it's in it's in uh, Georgia, North Georgia, up uh, up near the town of Blue Ridge. But I just thought kind of neat name and had some cool little features with the, like a little ridge in there and it's a little pond over there. You can kind of see that. But okay, so it's it's fairly simple to do this. I mean, it's not you know terribly difficult. Um, so we'll go through all the steps. And what you're looking at here, it actually is not how it's going to come in. Um, to Giants Editor, you can kind of see it's fairly smooth. I mean, there's some bumpiness in here, but um, this has been smoothed. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when we get something added in. But basically, this this none of this was done by hand except for smoothing it. Uh, so it just sort of popped in there. And this is going to save you tons of time um, because you can actually kind of see, I don't know if this was a road or a pipeline going right through here, if you can see my mouse. That's kind of a straight, straightish. <laughs> I just noticed that. I didn't see that before, but that could be a road going through there. I'm thinking maybe something else, you know, going through this way. It could be a road or a pipeline or something. I don't know, but there's a few other little places where it could be roads or something in there. But anyway, this kind of gives you a. a it's, it'll it'll save you a ton of time when you're doing map making because one of the biggest things is actually doing terrain. And what I usually do is I'll do the terrain first. I'll kind of have an idea of, you know, I want a hill over here, a mountain ridge over there, a pond over in this spot, you know, and and kind of think about how my roads want to be, I want to put those in. So I do the terrain first, and then I come back and do, you know, like I'll paint on where I want the grass, where I want the gravel roads, um, forest ground, all that kind of stuff, you know, I'll do all that later, and then start adding the trees and bushes and things. So the first step, usually for me, anyway, is the terrain, and this is this is this is absolutely going to save me a ton of time because could you imagine, you know, doing all this by hand and, and grabbing this little tool and raising this part up and then lowering lowering something over here, you know, and all that. So uh, you know, you can very quickly build your terrain, and it just takes a, a little bit of time to do that. And we'll we'll look at that. Okay, so first of all, uh, I'm going to close that because we don't need that anymore. And first of all, you're going to need the terrain data. And I've got a couple of different websites here pulled up. Um, this first one, um, it's a little bit harder to use than some other sites I've seen. And, and again, it's really going to depend on your state too. You know, or, or if you don't want to use your state, it depends on the other states because it, it just depends on how good a data they have. And in my case, in Louisiana, we have what's called LIDAR, and uh, this is for the whole state. Uh, it's all been flown with LIDAR, and what LIDAR is, is uh, basically you have an airplane, and it's flying along at a known altitude, because it's got GPS and all that stuff, at, uh, uh, and then it's got, in the bottom of the plane, it's got a, a machine that shoots a laser down to the ground, and so it shoots a laser beam down to the ground. It records the the very instant that it leaves, or you know, gets gets shot. I guess you could say. And when it bounces on the ground, it comes back up. It records the time it takes for that laser beam to reflect back. And so that time, because the plane's at a known altitude, it, it, it based on time, it knows the distance to the ground. And uh, so it shoots millions and millions of these points, and it gathers all this information. But you know, not all of them hit the ground. So um, there has to be some interpre interpretation done on the points when they get them back. 
because you know some of them are going to hit trees, some of them are going to hit buildings, whatever. And uh, so you know you have to sort of massage the data and, and extract those higher elevations, and you know and then eventually you build what's called a, a ground level uh, map. And then so that's what this is. Okay, so I'm going to pick something up here in the in this kind of reddish, orangish, yellowish area in this northwest part of the state, sort of, because all down here in this blue and green, all that area, that's that's all pretty low, flat land. So let's grab something up here that's going to be pretty hilly. Uh, you know, so something like uh, let's see, I think there's a, a lake right there. So that's probably not a good one because it'll just be flat in that little. Spot kind of darker yellow area. Um, here I'll tell you what, let's uh, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find something that's got a little bit of yellow in there but not a whole lot. I don't know, let's just go for that one. Okay, so in this case over here on the left it's showing me the files that I can download. So we got contours, DEM, raw points, and this QAQC report which you know, is just a report, I'll need that. You also don't need the raw points. If you ever come across a LIDAR website where you can download the data do not get the raw points because <laughs> you'll get millions and millions of little dots and you have really no way of doing anything with them. So what you're looking for is the DEM. Uh, so I'm going to click on that and it'll, it'll download here in a second. But let's go back over here to this USGS site and I want to show you this one because this is a, a fairly good place to go. Now you're, gonna, you're not going to get as good a resolution with uh, any kind of, you know, usually with any kind of government uh, data because is you know is usually flown at higher resolutions, and what I mean by that is, um, like if you can imagine a um, um, a pixel, you know, like so when you take a digital photograph or something, it's in pixels, right? It's not continuous as you would like a film camera or something, but with a digital photo, it's in pixels, little squares, and the smaller those little squares are, and the more of them per image, the higher resolution you have. But sometimes, like, you'll get across this, uh, some of this USGS data, government data, whatever, and it was flown at, like, 5 meter resolution, even up to 25, even 50 meter resolution. It's huge squares, so you're losing a lot of resolution there. So you want something that's really highly, um, you know, real high resolution, lots of small pixels. All right, now see if I remember how to do all this. Okay, so if you noticed over here, when you first come up to this website, if you just type in um, USGS elevation data, you'll uh, you'll get to here. I'll just back up and show you. Okay, so USGS elevation data. That's what I typed in, and this uh, second link here for me is this national map. So you click on that. And you come to this website. Now you have to go to the National Map Viewer. And this shows you what data is available. And then you probably saw I clicked on this uh, little um, data download link here, which gave me, which sends you over to here. Now this, what this is doing is uh, this will show you what data is available. I'm gonna pick something kind of in uh, the northern part of Arkansas up here. Probably, I don't know, somewhere around this Maumelle River area. Okay, well, there's there's a mountain right there. In fact, that may be, is that Pinnacle Mountain? North Fork of Pinnacle. Anyway, we're just going to use this because that's a nice little peak right there. Okay, so over here on the left, what you're looking for is elevation data or digital elevation, something like that, LIDAR even. So there's one right there that says LIDAR. And you click on that and not not all of it's going to be there. Um, you'll have to click on this little show and hide availability to see if there is LIDAR or other higher resolution stuff available. And there is for Arkansas. Um, but let's look, because this is just a point cloud. You also don't want that. You want to say, you want something that says DEM or, well, I guess really DEM is what you want. Okay, so that is available for that area. So now what we need to do is, 
I'm not exactly sure if you can, I, I guess, you know, up here at the top it says use map, which is actually telling um, the data downloader where you want, you know, this, what, what you want to download. And you can either use a box or a point, current extent, whatever. I'm just going to leave it actually as current extent because this will grab everything inside your map view, which actually is going to get you more than what you need. Okay, so we've got DEM selected. So and then you click on Find Products, and it's going to think about it for a second, and then it's going to pull up this right here. So USGS National Elevation Data, I think is what that stands for. And then it's going to tell you the resolution. Well, anyway, this is what you want. So I'm going to click download. And once, oh my goodness, that's 5.4 gigabytes. Um, well, that'll take a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't think I was going to be grabbing that much. Well, anyway, let's just cancel that because I'll, I'll show you what happens. Okay, so the first step, like I said, is to download your data. And I don't think we ever did. We ever, oh yeah, we got one right there. Okay, so we did. We did get some lidar data, so that'd be real high quality. I'll show you that. Now, I don't know if I can, you know, have time or whatever to show you the other one. See what the difference is, but because they're not in the same area. But okay, so first first step, like I said, is get your elevation data. You gotta have that. And then the next step is you're going to, have to go over here to this uh, QGIS program. This is a free open source type GIS program. And uh, GIS stands for Geographical Information Systems, in case you didn't know. Uh, I've got a degree in GIS, so I'm somewhat familiar with this program, although I've, I use, normally use a different program. This, this one here, this program here, is a little bit difficult to use, but once you kind of figure it out, and I'll show you just sort of what you need instead of, you know, because um, all, you, all you really need to do is just get a screenshot, and I'll show you that. Okay, so we need to get our raster data in here, and uh, so we downloaded a couple of things. Well, actually, just just this one. We need to extract that. So I'm just I've got 7-zip installed. So I'm just going to right click on the file, go to 7-zip, and I, and I might extract it to this folder. All right, so we've got it extracted. Now we need to add it into the map. So on this toolbar here, which I'm not really sure what toolbar this is, I couldn't ever figure that out. They don't have them labeled or anything. Whenever you, uh, uh, it says layers toolbar, but because you can go to view and then toolbars, but well, maybe that was it. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, so that's what it was. So view toolbars, manage layers toolbar. So that's what you need. If you don't have that, you need to get that added in because there's two things we need to do on here. The first one is we need to add the dig digital elevation model to the map. So we click on rasters because that's what it is. Um, and we downloaded it. So we got to go find that. Um, let's see. It's going to be down here in the folders. It's going to be that one right there. And we're looking for the file that has a .dem. So that's the first one is what we need. Open it. All right, so this is what it comes up with. And if you've ever looked around and, you know, making maps or whatever, and uh, we'll look here in a minute, but uh, in the, uh, for your mod, the map underscore DEM is, like if you were to go in the Giants and just start using the terrain tool and, and you know, increase in the height of some areas, decrease in the height of some other areas. When you go look at it, it, it sort of looks like this. It won't be exact, but it'll be somewhat similar to this. All right, so we've got the, uh, this digital elevation model added to our map. The next step is we need to make a two kilometer, if we're gonna make a standard size map, we need a two kilometer uh, square so we can grab all the data inside that. Okay, so the way that we're going to do this is this bottom uh, button here is, if it'll, the tooltip will come up there. So it says New Shapefile Layer. We need to click on that. And up here at the very top, the first thing we need to change is from point to polygon because we're making a square. Uh, you don't have to worry about this system, file encoding thing, all that. Um, this next one here is the coordinate system and once we added in the map or the digital elevation model to the map 
it automatically set it as that so just leave that alone it should be set uh, just fine there and then from here we're just going to click OK that's all we need to do now we need to save it so um, I'm going to let's see I'm just going to make a new folder in here I'm just going to call it Arkansas since that's where we're at and I'm going to save this as 2k bound I don't think it'll let me go any more than that any more characters than that okay so this will be fine because all we need to do is just make a box okay so we got the 2k bound shapefile added in there's nothing in there yet and we can't do anything with it just yet we have to enable editing first so this little pencil uh, this is the I believe this is the digitizing toolbar yeah so this first uh, our second little icon is actually not grayed out is the toggle editing button click that and then you see it, it highlights a bunch of other stuff on this uh, toolbar well this uh, fourth button over is the add feature button so click that and it enables this little panel this advanced digitizing panel so if you don't have that one go to view panels and then advanced digitizing panel you gotta have that one turned on okay so once that pops up the next thing we need to do is click this little ruler with this triangle thing and you can see it activates two more little boxes and if you notice once we mouse over the map you see the the um, cursor changes to like a little crosshair thing so we're gonna click in just click in the map somewhere you could even click it over here it doesn't matter just click it in there somewhere and for me anyway you see how it's when I when I move my mouse to the right just a little bit and it automatically clicks vertical if you don't have that I'm not really sure how to get that turned on but I'm hoping it's it's built in automatic but I guess if you don't have it you could rotate the shape file or something anyway but main main thing is what you're wanting to do is make a square I guess it'd be kind of hard to make a square without this turned on but hopefully it's there for you okay so back, back let me get back on track here so we need to make a two kilometer square box and how we're going to do that is because the map when it the coordinate system I was talking about uh, it had like a I think a WG84 WS84 something like that on the end of it that little uh, third little item I talked about under the file system or whatever where you didn't have to worry about um, that tells that that's telling me that it's in meters uh, which is what we want because it's kilometers is what we need so how to get a 2k box okay so the first thing you gotta do is once you've clicked in here and you've got the you know the little lines that are coming up everywhere come up here to this D and type in 2000 hit enter and it changes to a, this little circle now what this is saying is anywhere on this circle that we click um, is two kilometers from this original point we're making a square so I'm gonna you know click the very bottom you know straight vertical and then come back over here just keep going around 2000 I'm gonna go over here to the right click and 2000 again click click and then there we got it so now from here you right click it's gonna pop up this little box and all you gotta do is put a one in there it doesn't really matter what you put in there click OK alright so now we got us a box we can't see what's underneath though because we need to take a square sh uh, a square shot a screenshot of this area inside this box we need to make it um, transparent so click on color and let me expand this out just a little bit so we can see what's going on so all I did was click on um, let's see how did I get back get back okay so right here where it says color and it's got this purple you know box or whatever with this drop down I just clicked on it and then what you're looking for right here is this opacity and change it all the way to zero and click apply in the bottom right hand corner okay so now it's it's transparent we can see through there all right so where we got it right here looks pretty good I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it there but we need to zoom in first so 
on this uh, first toolbar under the main menu stuff you see this magnifying glass with the plus sign click on that and all you're going to do is click in the top left and drag a box around this other box and then it zooms in now the next step is you have you have to get a screenshot of this uh, you need what what's inside this little black box we need a screenshot of that so in my case I'm using Windows 10 and there's this built-in tool called um, the snipping toolbar it looks like this uh, if you have Windows 7 or above I think this is built in otherwise you'll have to have some sort of a screen capture program but so what I'm going to do is make sure that the mode is set to rectangular and then I'm going to click new and I'm going to grab everything that is inside that little box okay so I got it now I need to save it and so you can either go file save as or click this little save snip button I'm just going to do that um, let's see we were in Arkansas and I'm going to change this to DEM so I know that it's a DEM file and that's pretty much it we got it saved alright so the next step is we need to open up some sort of a graphics editing program whether it be Photoshop uh, paint.net uh, GIMP I mean there's, there's several of them out there probably even some more that I'm not even aware of but what I use is Photoshop so we'll get Photoshop and, uh, open and then we're going to open up that DEM file because we need to do uh, first of all we need to do one thing well, two things to it really so first thing is we're going to go to open and we're going to go to uh, our mods folders where we're at actually no we're in the that documents folder Arkansas there we go okay so we got um, this DEM dot PNG this is what we just grabbed the screen capture from that other program there it is okay so we need to do a couple things to it first of all we gotta change the actual image size because if you're making a standard size map which I believe is 248 by 248 then you have to change this to 1025 by 1025 why that I don't know but that's the way it's got to be okay so that kind of blows up just a little bit and then the second thing I'm going to do is remember I talked about uh, to start how it's going to look kind of bumpy or whatever because of the pixels well let's uh, let's zoom in here just a bit so you see maybe right before Photoshop sort of turns into this grid pattern you might can kinda of see some pixely stuff going on I can faintly see some little squares in here what I like to do oh and here here's a good example over here you can kinda of see it over here in this spot where it gets a little darker how it's kinda of square pixely looking what I like to do I don't know if this helps any or not but We'll leave it zoomed in at this level, but when I usually go, I go up to a uh, filter, blur, and then this Gaussian blur, which uh, you see it, it kind of helps some there. So I don't know if you can see that. I'll I'll cancel and then come back to it. You see how it's kind of pixely looking on this side, like especially right in here, right in that little spot right there. You can see some kind of pixely stuff going on. So what I'm doing is going to filter blur and then Gaussian blur. I've got it set for three pixels and just turn it OK and it kind of smooths it out a little bit. This will help a little, uh, but as you'll see when we get it in the Giants editor, it still got some bumpiness to it or whatever. Okay, so we've got the image size saved and we did the blur thing. So we just need to save this as a uh, well, just we'll just overwrite that one. Uh, DEM.png. All right. I'm hoping that everything works out okay. Now the next thing I need to do is uh, I've actually uh, let's see. Did I? I've got something in here. I think. But anyway, I'll I'll figure it out. But so I've got this uh, blank map by blur modding. I got this off of like. You know, farming simulator 19 mods.com or something like that. One of the mod sites, you can get a bunch of these things around. But this is a, just a blank map. And um, I 
think I've already got one loaded in here for the DEM, but we'll just, uh, oh yeah, I do. Okay, well, I didn't really like that one anyway, so I'm going to just override it. All right, so let me open up another file explorer, and we'll go navigate to our uh, Arkansas folder. And we've got this DEM.png, so copy that. And we're going to paste it over here in this uh, mod folder. All right, so we got it there. Now what you need to do is this map de underscore dem and this might say us it depends on you know how you uh, where, where you downloaded your blank map from but what you're looking for is underscore dem dot png but we're going to copy this and then delete it so delete that dem file come back up here to the dem we just pasted in from our screenshot and paste the file name in there which effectively changes that as our dem file now and hopefully everything will come in smooth. If you saw my previous video, uh, I said something about you need to change the color, but from black and white to color, but you don't need to do that. All right, so open, and let me go back to hit the blank map, maps, and then we're looking for that i3d file. Click open. Now, if everything loads, then we've done our job, but we should get some terrain automatically built. Yep, so there we go. So see how easy that was? Um, we've already got our basically our terrain built for us. And as you can see as I'm zooming in, you see what I'm talking about, sort of the bumpiness to it? Well, there's not really a whole lot we can do about that just because that's sort of digital files with you know this little area is a little bit lower elevation than this little area and it's just the color change and there's not really a whole lot we can do about that however to fix this is pretty simple all you gotta do is click this terrain uh, let's see what is it called terrain sculpt mode and I, I've got my radius here I'll set that for like I don't know maybe 30 uh, I got my value set at 1, and so I'm just going to middle mouse button, because if you look here, the middle mouse button is smooth, and that's what you want. So just make sure that's set to smooth, or, I mean, you could even set it to the left mouse button, doesn't matter. But just make sure whatever button you've got set for smooth, that's what you use. And so I'm just going to middle mouse button, and just quickly go over this real quick. I mean, don't spend a lot of time, because it will affect the terrain a, a good bit, but you can see pretty quickly you can get all that bumpiness worked out and then all you got to do from there is just go over the whole map real quick and uh, then you start putting in your roads and adding your detail and stuff so it makes it real quick to uh, add terrain data I mean if you just want to do something fictional you just pick a spot but if you actually want to use a real world location like if, if you uh, have seen my Dodson logging videos uh, Dodson is actually a town in Louisiana where there is a sawmill and lots of forestry stuff going on there. But I didn't I didn't use this method, but I kind of modeled it after that. But if you wanted to use actual real world terrain data, this is the way to do it. And you see, I'm just pretty quickly getting this terrain smoothed out, and that's all there is to it. So I um, hope this helps you out some. And uh, if you've got any questions, just leave me a comment. Uh, I'm also on Discord. I got a Discord channel. I'll try to remember to leave a link for that. And I'll also leave links for the QGIS program that we used and the uh, um, US, USGS site. Um, but now just remember that if, you're, if your state or area you're, want, you're wanting to map has LIDAR data or some other, you know, one meter, two meter, or something like that resolution digital elevation model, excuse me, then that's what you want to use because it'll be. Um, way more accurate and the terrain will be a lot more highly detailed like this than you would be getting anything from the USGS because normally they uh, it's either shuttle mission data or satellite or something you know and it's recorded at a much lower resolution than this kind of stuff but uh, anyway I hope this helps and uh, thanks for watching and like I say leave me a comment if you got questions or whatever but I'll be happy to help 
But thanks for watching. Talk to you later.